I went out and got three monitor sizes. Using my old 27 inch monitor started feeling a little cramped and I was constantly switching between windows and panes. Since I primarily use the monitor to code and play video games, I felt I could benefit from a larger monitor. If you're in the market for productivity monitor in 2022, you might have seen that there's plenty of sizes that are already available. Commonly, you'll see 34 inch monitors, but there's also 38 and even 49 inches. But which one of these monitor sizes is the best for overall productivity? There's a 34 inch BenQ 38WN75C, there's a 38 LG 38WN75C, and even the 49 inch Samsung LC49. Well, you can just read the rest. Ultra wide monitors, or as I call them, productivity monitors, have a few advantages. The width allow you to multitask in a straightforward manner by placing multiple programs right next to each other. And unlike having two monitors side by side, having a single monitor lets you save space and there's no ugly bezel in the middle. But obviously, the bigger you go, the downsides also become apparent. The bigger monitor itself is expensive, but it also requires large amounts of space for the stands. They also require expensive monitor arms that are needed to handle the heavy weight if you plan on mounting them. Moreover, these higher resolutions also require the presence of expensive GPUs to drive the individual pixels. And spoiler alert, I did have some issues. Personal preferences will be huge factors in deciding on a size that you like. So before you watch this video, just keep that in mind. And my conclusions may not necessarily apply to you. Let's go ahead and see what the test was like. Alright, first up we got the 34 inch BenQ. We have an IPS panel with a matte finish. The matte finish is better for reflections and sunlight and overhead lights not coming through. It has a 1440p resolution. It feels very smooth when scrolling, typing, or moving your mouse thanks to a 144Hz refresh rate. It has AMD FreeSync, and it retails for about $1400. Oh, and it also has speakers, which were adequate actually. Now, before I move on, I just want to mention that this monitor is more for gaming rather than productivity, and it's pretty expensive for the size of the monitor that you're getting. But you'll see in a second why this is actually one of my favorite monitors that I've tried out. The BenQ34 actually had very good blacks, the text was crisp and clear and was very enjoyable to use. Movies and music videos looked good, but these tend to look better on glossy panels, and here they were just as good. The best feature that this panel has was just how good the colors were out of the box. The massive gain in productivity I experienced from going from a 27 to a 34 inch size was immense. Gaming was good also. In this case, I was gaming on the PS5, which doesn't natively support 1440p, but rather upscales 1080p. So, gaming in 1440p monitors on the PS5 is not ideal, however, this is the case for all monitors here. I personally prefer the inky and glossy colors on IPS panels, but the high refresh rate certainly makes this a capable monitor. If this monitor had any cons, I would say that the height adjustment didn't have the range I expected. I'm on the taller side, I wanted to be able to raise this monitor another inch or two off the ground, but I wasn't able to because of how the stand was and I didn't feel like investing in a monitor arm. This monitor is pricey for sure, but I think your money goes towards a better panel. But what if you wanted the best media consumption experience? Let's take a look at the LG. I was very excited to try out a monitor with a large size such as this. This is the LG 38 inch 38WN75C. It retails for about $1,300. It has a 60 Hertz refresh rate, a glossy IPS panel, and it's meant for productivity rather than gaming. However, for all the good colors that the BenQ had out of the box, the LG had the worst. Some skin tones looked blotchy, and other colors were so oversaturated, it was actually searing my eyes. Because I am measuring the out-of-the-box experience here. The jump from 34 to 38 inches wasn't actually as big as I personally expected. However, for intense professionals like academics or accountants, I can see the extra space being valuable. The blacks were also not good. This made coding on this monitor not very enjoyable, and I would say not really worth it. Overall, I think this screen size has potential. However, the panel quality on the LG was just not worth $1,300 in my opinion. If this is a monitor size, that appeals to you, I would actually look for one with a better performing panel. But beware, this probably means you're going to have to spend more than $1300. Lastly, we have the Samsung LC49 RG9. It's got 120 hertz refresh rate with AMD FreeSync. Its focus is on gaming. It's the equivalent of having two 27 inch monitors side by side. And honestly, this is the big daddy of monitors. A 49 inch monitor is truly eye opening. And it's an experience that's only possible in 2022. Its size truly felt immersive because of the way it wraps around your vision thanks to its curve. This is truly the ultimate ultra-wide monitor. However, remember when I told you that having such a big monitor requires sophisticated hardware and GPUs? Well, my experience out of the box was not that smooth and it was a little puzzling. I wasn't able to get the native 1440p resolution out of the box running a DisplayPort cable from my dock to the monitor. 
I saw a fuzzy and magnified image, and the image wasn't scaling well. After doing some research, my understanding was that I needed a special Thunderbolt to display port cable to get the full native resolution, which I would have to order and had to wait for. But when it comes to productivity, I felt like I couldn't open windows fast enough and couldn't really utilize all the space on the monitor. Because of the way my desk is, sitting that close to a 49 inch monitor made me feel a little disorientated. Overall, my out of the box experience with the monitor left a lot to be desired. Going from a 38 to a 49 inch, that represents about a 22% increase in size. However, I felt like there were diminishing returns and your productivity wouldn't necessarily increase 22%. This brings me to my next point. The monitor panel type is just as important to consider for the type of work you're doing as the monitor size. In my experience, the panel quality affects the experience a lot. As for the 49 inch, I feel like this monitor did not get a fair chance at this comparison. But my impressions of this size is that it's just too massive. Even though you can have multiple windows open, you need to physically turn your neck to see the content. So unless you're a CEO or you're launching a satellite into space, this size is overkill for productivity. In conclusion, the best productivity size monitor for 80% of the people is probably around 34 inches. It's a size where you will notice productivity gains almost instantly. Chances are, most desks can accommodate this size easily. There's plenty of competition for manufacturers at this monitor size, so prices will be reasonable. I can recommend the 38-inch monitor to people who do work related to video editing, have a lot of comparisons to make in their day-to-day -day work. Personally, I did not feel a jump from 34-inch to 38-inch was warranted, but I don't want to say that there's no use for this size. 